Now it's time for the next episode in our series, A History of the World in a Hundred Objects. Neil McGregor, the director of the British Museum, presents a history of humanity as told through 100 objects that he's chosen from the museum's collection. Today's object takes us to Sri Lanka. That's the sound of Buddhist monks chanting. And as you could perhaps hear, they're invoking the name of Tara, the spirit of generous compassion. We all need help to tackle the predicament of life, even the powerful and the privileged, whose private worlds I'm focusing on this week. And pretty well every religion has spirits or saints, gods or goddesses that can be called upon to see us through. If you were a Sri Lankan around 800 AD, you would probably have turned, like the monks we've just heard, to Tara. Over the centuries, many artists have given Tara physical form. But it's hard to imagine many more beautiful than the golden, nearly life-size figure that now serenely presides over the long Asian gallery at the British Museum. I'm not a religious person, so I just see it as a wonderfully beautiful and indeed quite sensuous figure of a woman. You can also see that it's a work of extraordinary technical perfection. A history of the world in a hundred objects. bronze statue of Tara, 8th to 9th century, from Sri Lanka. The statue of Tara is cast in one piece of solid bronze that's been covered in gold. When new, she must have been dazzling when she was seen under the Sri Lankan sun. And even now, when her gilding is rather worn and she stands in the cool light of Bloomsbury, she still has a compelling luster. She is about three quarters life size and she stands, as she always would have, on a plinth, so that as you look up at her, she benignly gazes down at you. Her face tells you at once that she comes from South Asia, but that's not the first thing that strikes visitors as they look at her. She's got a quite impossible hourglass figure and her upper body is completely naked. Her full and perfectly rounded breasts float above a tiny wasp waist, while below, a flimsy sarong is draped in gleaming folds which cling to and beguilingly reveal her shapely lower body. So you'll hardly be surprised to learn that when Tara arrived at the British Museum from Ceylon, as it was then known in the 1830s, She was seen as so dangerously erotic and voluptuous that she was at once put into the storerooms and kept there for 30 years, visible only to specialist scholars on request. But this statue was absolutely not made to titillate. She's a religious being, one of the spiritual protectors to whom the Buddhist faithful can turn in distress and from a religious tradition that has no difficulty at all in happily combining divinity and sensuality. The statue of Tara takes us into a world where faith and bodily beauty converge to move us beyond ourselves. It also tells us a great deal about the world of Sri Lanka and South Asia 1,200 years ago. The island of Sri Lanka, separated from India by only 20 miles of shallow water, has always been an important hub in the seaborne trade that stitches the lands of the Indian Ocean together. In the years around 800 AD, Sri Lanka was in close, indeed constant, contact with the neighbouring kingdoms of South India, but also with the Islamic Abbasid Empire in the Middle East, with Indonesia and with Tang China. Sri Lankan gems were particularly highly prized, and 1,200 years ago, rubies and garnets from here were being regularly traded to east and west, reaching the Mediterranean and possibly even Britain. Some of the gems from the great Anglo-Saxon ship burial at Sutton Hoo may well have come from Sri Lanka. But it was not only goods that travelled. The teachings of the Buddha, who lived and preached in North India sometime around 500 BC, 
had gradually evolved into a complex philosophical and spiritual system of conduct designed to liberate the individual's soul from the illusion and suffering of this world. The new faith spread rapidly along the trade routes of India, so that when this sculpture of Tara was made around 800 AD, Sri Lanka had been predominantly Buddhist for over a thousand years. The particular strand of Buddhism that flourished in Sri Lanka at this time gave a special place to divine beings called bodhisattvas who could help the faithful live better lives. Tara is one of them. Now, who exactly is this Buddhist image called Tara? Professor Richard Gombrich, a leading expert on Buddhist history and thought. She's a personification. She represents in person, symbolically, the power of a Buddha to save you, to take you across the ocean, which is this world, into which, according to most Buddhists, you are continually reborn until you find your way out. There's a particular future Buddha, Bodhisattva, called Avalokiteshvara, and he's first found in texts which probably date from the first century A.D. Initially, he operates by himself, but after a few centuries, the idea came that his power to save could be personified as a goddess. She represents his compassion.